So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rails member update for Thursday, December 11th. Um, I think we will start, as we always do, by going around to our various sites and having everybody introduce themselves. Um, I will say uh, to begin that um, we are still, there's a couple of sites that are still getting themselves technologically organized. Um, so people may be uh, popping in in the next, you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, and I am here at the West Aurora branch, uh, at the West branch of the Aurora Public Library. Um, and so, thank you, Daisy. I think we'll start with introductions here. So I'm Dee Brennan from Rails. Deborah Stambries, Martin Hill. Sue Erickson, Robert Morris, and ILA. Sandy Whitmer, Warrenville Public. Laureen Kennard Morris, Area Public Library. I'm Teresa Witt from Fermilab. Laura Hayes from Carroll Street. And Daisy Porter is, is here in spirit. <laughs> She'll be <laughs> back soon. So um, can we go now? I guess we'll go alphabetically. Is there anybody in Bolingbrook today? Hi, D. Uh, Joe from Rails, and we've got with us uh, Paul from Fountaindale. Hey, Paul. Hey. Jenny from Sherwood. Hey. Tatiana, Tatiana Weinstein, Lyle Library District. Paul Hurt from Lyle. Great. Okay. How about Burr Ridge? Class, Rails. Debbie Vasky, Rails. Mark Hatch, Rails. Ann Slaughter, Rails. Lisa Knashoff, River Grove. And soon rail. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Veranda Rails. Amanda Rails. We just had one more person join us. Meg Klinka Harbin, South Holland. Okay. Hey, thank you. How about Cole Valley? Morning, D. Uh, Judy Hutchinson from Prairie Cat Rails. Leanne Brunberg, Andalusia. Catherine Morrisley, Mercer Carnegie Library. Laura Long, East Moline Public Library. Angela Campbell, Rock Island Public Library. Ashton Trimble, Black Rock College. That's it. Okay, thank you. How about East Peoria? Grant Fredrickson, Illinois Prairie at Metamora. Robin Hollenthal from Peoria Public Library. Okay, thanks. How about in Rockford? Is anybody in Rockford? No. Okay. How about Wheeling? Yes, Mary Whit Rails. Stitch Torito, Vernon area. Jan Vandekar, Park Ridge. Uh, Cindy First, Gurdon area. Robbie Thomas, Grace Lake. Diane McNulty, Cary area. Lisa Detling, Stevenson High School. That's it. All right. Great. Thanks. So now we'll go to some of our other uh, library sites. We're here in Aurora, in e uh, yeah, right, I keep saying, I keep wanting to say East Aurora, it's West. <laughs> um, is the Illinois State Library on the phone? Not yet, I guess. Okay, we'll come back to them. Is Kankakee yeah, up they're yet? Yeah, they're oh. on. Hang on. <laughs> we need to turn their volume up. Hi, State Library. Can you go over your introductions again? Sure, we'll start again. Okay, this is Ann Craig. Hi, this is Cindy Coletti. Lauren Tucker, Tom Doris. Pat Bowes. Joe Natale. Did you hear that? Yes, thank yes. you. Thank All you. Right. How about Kankakee? Do we have anybody at Kankakee yet? Good morning, um, Melissa Landis from the Kankakee Public Library, Jamie Lockwood from Antino Public Library, and that's it. Okay, thank you. How about LaSalle? We're here at LaSalle. Um, we, can, we can hear you, we can't see you, but that might not be a bad thing, so. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Christy Sifija from the LaSalle Public Library, and I have two other members here. Debbie Smith from Robert Rowe Public Library. Julie Wayland from Princeton Public Library. All right. Great, thank you. How about New Lenox? 
Uh, Rich Ashley, Fossil Ridge Public Library. Maureen Borman, Piatone Public Library. And Great. that's it. Thank you. How about Quincy? All right, nobody at Quincy. How about Sterling? Hi, from Sterling. This is Jennifer Slaney, Sterling Public. Jenny O'Rourke, Byron Public. Becky McCants, Mount Morris Public. Linda Schreiber, Bertlett Memorial. That is all. Thank you. How about Sycamore? Nancy Radke from Clinton Township. Peggy Wolgan, Malta Township. Riley Robel, Hinkley Public Library. Great, and how about Western Illinois? Okay, all right, great. So, uh, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, we also have a lot of people out there uh, streaming. We, I think we, we uh, uh, had a total attendance one way or another about, of about 90 people. So even though you may not feel like there's a lot of people in the room with you necessarily, there's a lot of people out there uh, participating, which is great. So I um, just want to remind everybody, therefore, to, to speak up when you do talk, to feel free to talk. And um, also that we do have uh, the ability for the people who are streaming to ask questions or comment by um, emailing, I think, is it is it feedback at Rails uh, Libraries? Is that right, Mary? Yes, that's correct, and that email is on the agenda if people have an agenda, mm -hmm. but it is feedback at railslibraries.info. Terrific. Okay. So I'm just going to run through a few things just to um, uh, give you an update on some things that are going on. Uh, just on Monday, uh, we had our first meeting of the System Standards Committee. Um, in, uh, we met in Burr Ridge and LaSalle. Uh, we had about uh, 40 people in attendance, as, and uh, Lorene was there. Um, a lot of people who were on this, on this conference were at the meeting. And uh, this is something that we have just started working on because of, of a lot of uh, feedback that we got th when we did our strategic planning a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago that um, we needed to have some me membership standards that were more stringent or more a little more rigorous than the ones that we currently have, which are very minimal. The ones that uh, you know, stipulate that you have to have a 15-hour-a-week paid employee, that you have to have a collection, that you have to have a building. Um, so we, uh, we asked for volunteers for this committee. We got a lot of them, um, 40 or so. Um, it's a very diverse uh, group, uh, so that's really good, a lot of a variety of opinions. Um, although we did um, convene this committee at Rails or from Rails, um, this is very much a cooperative ep uh, effort with uh, Illinois Heartland a Library System and the State Library. They both have representation on the committee. So uh, we, be, uh, we started the day off with some education about the standards as they currently exist, and um, uh, uh, um, especially for different types of libraries because this is uh, also a multi-type effort. And uh, then we did some brainstorming um, in the afternoon about what a, um, a sort of um, the, uh, the way, I guess the best way to describe it is um, a pathway to excellence for libraries. So in other words, standards that are not just minimum, but that are encouraging libraries to be, to be better. I mean, it's all about um, giving libraries the tools to serve their communities better. So, so um, there's going to be some small working groups that form out of this large group to be uh, looking at different things, everything from, um, you know, what the, uh, th those uh, pathways to excellence might be f in terms of collection standards or um, education or training standards, um, uh, customer service standards, so you know a whole variety of things. Plus the whole diff you know multi-type library uh, concept is so it's a complicated but very uh, interesting and important uh, thing that's going on. And 
So we'll uh, be keeping you up to date about that. Um, then I was going to say a little bit about the rules. Um, the, the, these are the, um, the, the rules for systems. This is in the administrative <coughs> code. I'm sure a lot of you are aware that this is a project that the State Library has been working on. Um, and uh, they were uh, posted on the, um, in the Illinois Register, or uh, index in the Illinois Register on December 5th. And we sent out a, a Rails alert about that, and we all, it was in our e-news yesterday as well. We did an analysis, which is, an all, which is also posted, and uh, there will be a public hearing on January 21st, and comments are, will be accepted through January 23rd. And I'm assuming that the State Library is going to uh, pipe up if I say anything that's incorrect, but... Uh, there is an official, um, you know, we're now into a very official process. The comment period, um, as I said, will go through January 23rd, and then um, it will, the, uh, there will be, um, I guess, hearings is the right word, by the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules. That's who kind of has the legislative authority over this. So um, I don't know if anybody has any Anybody at, um, out there has any questions about the rules or the comment process at this point? Do, um, anybody have any questions here in Aurora or, or anywhere else about this? State Library, did I say anything wrong? Correct. It was correct as far, yeah, it was correct. Thanks, Steve. Okay. I haven't read. Um, the rules or the analysis yet, but I'm happy to have the analysis. As a new director, it puts it in context for yes. me. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, good, that. good. Okay, all right. Well, um, there's some time for that, so um, I'm sure that there will be other opportunities, um, at least at the public hearing, to discuss this, and that will be uh, via video conference as well. On, the, as I say, on the 21st. Um, Let's see. Then I was. I wanted to say a little, a little bit about um, um, delivery, but maybe I will just stop and make sure that nobody has any questions about anything that I've said so far, here in Aurora at, or at any of the other sites. Any questions about the standards committee, the rules, or anything <coughs> else on your mind out there? Okay. Okay, so our next, um, the way we um, or, um, organized this meeting was we, uh, we asked some of uh, members of our member advisory group about some uh, possible topics, and delivery was one that was suggested, and then um, some discussion of, of multi-type cooperation and networking. And so those are kind of our major uh, topics for the day. Uh, the delivery discussion has a few different components. I'm just going to start it off by talking a little bit about outsourcing. As you know, um, probably we um, outsourced our delivery service at the Burridge uh, Service Center just about a year ago, a um, year ago in January. Um, and uh, it has gone very well, as, as I think, as I have definitely uh, described previously, um, the launch, um, you know, in January during the coldest and some of the worst, you know, weather conditions we've had in decades was probably not, in retrospect, <laughs> a good time to do it, but who knew? And, um, you know, we sort of figured, well, if that would, if it would work then, it would probably work any time. So um, there were bumps, but they have really smoothed out uh, very well. Um, we um, have a, a great partner, and I really do mean partner in, uh, with our, vet, in our, our vendor, um, uh, CTS, or uh, Continental uh, Transportation Solutions. They have really, uh, we have worked through a lot of difficult issues together, including the weather, um, you know, communication issues in terms of who's responsible for communicating to who about different issues. Uh, but they also ha are um, working with us to develop uh, an online um, ticketing system so that libraries can, you know, put their, you know, send their problems 
assuming that there ever are any problems with delivery, of course, um, you know, to one place and, you know, they can be tracked. Um, but, you know, obviously they, you know, being, a, a, you know, in the logistics industry, they already have a lot of IT uh, infrastructure that can be very helpful to us who, you know, don't have a lot of delivery you know, focused IT. We didn't even, we didn't even have conveyor belts in our delivery hub. So, um, so that has um, has been very successful that relationship. And uh, I want to thank you all for recently participating in the fine count that you did, which was um, we are now doing this I think four times a year. This was a recommendation of the um, the Illinois State Library. Uh, delivery Advisory uh, Committee, affectionately known as ISLDAC, um, and we have um, it's a great acronym. Um, and the uh, the fine count has been extremely informative. Um, we had not done these uh, consistently in previous years, and were you know estimating um, how many items were in containers, and it turns out that our estimates were not always correct. And so that it ha we have now much more accurate information about the number of items being delivered and the number of items being shared. So just the, the volume of resource sharing as well. So that was very informative and very helpful as we move forward to do more outsourcing, which um, the board, our board's delivery committee uh, met a week or so ago and did ask staff to move forward to develop a recommendation for extending outsourcing to another uh, one of our service centers. So we are working on that. We obviously have to develop um, some financial information about, you know, what it's costing us currently at different places and, you know, so that we can be sure that we price it, uh, price the outsourcing correctly. Um, we have not officially uh, selected a particular hub or service center, obviously. That's why we're doing this analysis. But it is certainly um, a high possibility that it will be the Wheeling Service Center because the only reason that we are still in the Wheeling building is because we have delivery there. And so those are costs that we would immediately not incur. Uh, so, but the uh, the committee is is um, not meeting again until the end of January to um, enable us to um, to do a, an appropriate analysis. But I'm just giving everybody a heads up that this is coming, and there will be lots more communication about it. That's for sure. So, um, that's my part. Um, on outsourcing, we're now going to turn to the State Library to talk about the ISLDAC uh, recommendations and what the and how the implementation is going or what the implementation plans are. And so I'm going to turn it over to you, State Library. Good morning. This is uh, Tom Dorst, and I am standing in for Ron Winter, as uh, most of you may know. He's out for a, a little bit. Um, so. Uh, as uh, Dee was saying, the, the State Library's Advisory Committee completed its work last March, uh, and then the final report was approved by ISLAC in April, and that uh, uh, report is available online uh, at the State Library site, and we could, if anybody needs it, uh, send an email and we can, we can get you the link, but it's, if you just go to the State Library site, you can find it. Um, <clears throat> since then, Ron and uh, staff from both uh, Illinois Heartland and Rails have begun to uh, discuss and implement the recommendations of the report. Uh, and I wanted to just uh, highlight a couple of the accomplishments so far. Um, the first is the normalization of the holiday calendar for non-service days, uh, adoption of a statewide standard for delivery frequency. That's probably the most recent accomplishment. Um, and that frequency is, will be based on volume. And both, both systems have agreed to the same volume um, uh, parameters for uh, two, three, four, and five day a week delivery. Those are, um, uh, I'll, I'll defer to folks at Rails on the, the implementation of that specifically in Rails or in any specific location, but the, the standards have been adopted. Um, 
then uh, D uh, mentioned the uh, establishment of standards st uh, delivery statistics gathering, uh, and both Heartland and Rails are now collecting the same information at the same time. Um, a, a test run, if you will, was done in September um, and then refined and then done again in November. Uh, and I, I think uh, Mark would agree, uh, Mark Hatch there would agree that the November count was, was pretty good, that, that uh, we think we're going to get really useful um, information from that, the November uh, gathering. Uh, there will be subsequent uh, gathering, uh, data gatherings in February and May. And then when those are com the two systems and the ILDS statistics are combined, we should begin to have a, pr uh, a pretty accurate picture of uh, delivery statewide and something that then can be replicated and we can have some confidence in over time. Um, the, the last thing that I wanted to mention is uh, that initial planning is uh, underway to identify, and organize, and launch a series of community delivery partnerships. Uh, this was a major recommendation of the committee uh, with the goal of uh, increasing the frequency of delivery and thereby uh, the equity of delivery statewide. Uh, the, the ultimate goal, the, 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 the nirvana of this, would be five-day-a-week delivery for everybody in the state so that um, uh, every citizen, when making a request for a resource sharing item, could be guaranteed that it would come in basically the same time frames as anywhere else in the state, but regardless of size, geography, anything of that nature. Um, <coughs> the uh, Ron and Mark Hatch and Susan Palmer are in the process of, and, and now I standing in for Ron, of outlining how this will work. And uh, let me just for those of you who that the community develop, delivery partnership might be a, a new term or whatever, let me just generally describe it. Obviously, one of the things that needs to be determined is what is a community. Now, the first thing that would come to mind is a geographic organization, you know, a, a town where you would have a public library, uh, the school system, perhaps a hospital library, and perhaps a college. So this is intended to be a multi-type uh, activity <coughs> whereby the delivery would take place at one of those institutions within the community. Um, it wouldn't have to be a single town. It could be multiple towns. It, it, these, are, these are all things that will be um, investigated and proposed. The participation, uh, the, the benefit to uh, the participants, obviously, would be that uh, you may well be able to receive more frequent delivery. Uh, and the, what the, the, the skin you would have in that game is that you would then have to, uh, up, if you were at the delivery site per se, you would have to obtain, go in and uh, pick up your materials um, on, on some schedule. So there are, there are a lot of parts and pieces to this. Um, the delivery advisory committee uh, recommendation was that over time or ultimately that this that one these it's clear how these partnerships would work and that they are successful I mean there, there would certainly be a uh, uh, an implementation review of these things but if they are proved to be successful that they would be implemented statewide that that the, the state library is committed to the, the equity of delivery and that this the committee's recommendation was this is the way to go go forward to accomplish that in the you know in the same historical way that uh, automation programs were made available to libraries throughout the state in order to uh, make access uh, and discovery more equitable so this this is early days in uh, the community to partnership oh, and the one other thing I wanted to mention we're not starting these from ground zero. There are already a significant number of community delivery partnerships in place, functioning and functioning well. So one of the first things that we're going to do is kind of look at those. You know, what are the characteristics of those? Where are they? Um, if there are some that aren't working well, we understand why they wouldn't be working well before you know, there's a blanket implementation of anything like this. So, as I say, kind of early days, um, how a community is defined might have some, some uh, variables to it, but that's the direction we're going. 
and I think that's where I will stop and uh, entertain any questions. Uh, I think it's great when we can use the word normal in a report. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> Thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom about what's going on with uh, with Isildac? There's a, there as as he said, there are a lot of, of pieces. The report is extensive, and um, you know a lot of this is going to be occurring over years. But I I do think that we are. Ag really getting a better handle on on delivery whether it's how much we're doing or you know how to make it more equitable more efficient certainly a, a critical uh, service um, but we you know we do have to um, rationalize it as well so if I could bring up yes some, of course uh, and indulge a special library um, I'm Teresa Witt from Fermilab um, <coughs> We have an issue because we, you know, we don't, as a small library, we don't do a lot of volume. We don't have reciprocal library returns and things like that. We strictly have interlibrary loan that we do, and we're seeing um, significant delays. I'm talking two, two and a half weeks from the source library to delivery to our, to us of borrowed materials which cuts down our patron's due date time, which might normally be a four-week period, to a week and a half or two weeks. This is through our delivery system? Yes. Oh, my goodness. That's and horrible. then when we send things out, like in the week that we counted, we had, and this was a big week for us, we had like nine items, I think, that went out. <laughs> so, um, But we had them daily, and we have someone that we email um, and tell them, and it took a week and a half for them to come and pick, pick up our items. Took us a week and a half. Yes. Okay. All right. So, well, we need to talk to you okay. offline about this. <laughs> so, I, and I know so we're very glad. special and we're very no, but you know, that's the small whole point. But that it's that this is about this is for everybody. You're a system member. So, um, so Mark Hatch there in Berid, <laughs> I am saying yes. that you are going to be helping the uh, Fermi Lab figure this out. Okay. I've got it noted already. All right, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for sure. telling. I mean, if we don't know about it, we can't fix it. So, um. All right, anybody else in Aurora have anything at this point? How about in any of the other sites? Anybody have any questions or comments for Tom or anything so far on delivery or anything um, on feedback at Rails Libraries, Mary? Nothing yet. This is Ann. Oh, go ahead. Hi, Ann. I was just going to say, this is Ann Craig at the State Library. I wanted to thank uh, Tom Doris for stepping in. He's doing a, a wonderful job, as you can hear. Uh, and just to uh, fortify his comments about the, the whole community concept is one that the entire uh, delivery committee was very um, hopeful uh, that there will be uh, implementation uh, and the reason that this was one of the the major pieces of the committee is that there has been because we do have so many different libraries all across the spectrum uh, there has been a great unevenness of service uh, throughout the state, and so this this community concept, as Tom said, would get us. We think, we hope, if if we can, uh, if we can successfully manage a, a transition, uh, could get us to a place where um, libraries could have regular, dependable, five day a week service, which we think would just really uh, increase resource sharing and the value of resource sharing to the people who use our libraries across the state. Mm -hmm. So we're very uh, optimistic and are looking, as Tom said, very closely at the lessons that we can learn from the existing um, 
arrangements. So I, I hope that this five day a week uh, uh, dream is realized because in this day and age, I think it is not just a nicety, but it is expected. There is a, a uh, an immediacy that is built into everything we do, um, whether it's ordering online or picking up the phone, we expect it the next day. And I think that we just, as a library community, we need to acknowledge that five day a week is where we need to be pointing our delivery ship. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Are there any other comments from anywhere before we uh, move on to uh, Mark's report? Okay, then I'm going to ask Mark, um, who is our delivery and facilities director at Rails, to talk about a few different things, um, and some related to um, the, the, the state uh, recommendations. Take it away, Mark. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Dee and Tom has already stole a lot of the stuff I wanted to say already, but <laughs> I'm not going to try and repeat too much of it, you know. But uh, I wanted to start off by thanking uh, the uh, SWAN staff. You know, they did a great job of creating the prototype uh, for the, uh, uh, the standardized, uh, the computerized uh, delivery uh, label uh, that they are actually creating from their uh, ILS. Uh, so I wanted to definitely start off by uh, thanking uh, those guys. So let me let me back up for a second. I guess the three areas that I'm going to talk about, if you don't have the agenda in front of you, is going to be the computerized delivery label uh, pilot, uh, the statewide ticketing system, and then also the fine count that just occurred in November. So those are the three areas that I'm going to briefly touch on. Uh, uh, so did the thanks for uh, the SWAN staff because I think they did an outstanding job of uh, 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 I wanted to just uh, state just how that uh, label is actually going to be used. It's actually going to be used twofold. It's actually going to be used as a whole slip and also as a delivery label. You know, we have currently have got uh, two libraries that are piloting the, uh, the new label, and they seem to love it. You know, they stated that uh, it saves time by eliminating the, the need to create a manual delivery label. Uh, so... Uh, I also wanted to thank Jane Plass for uh, thinking of seeing the big picture and expanding the, uh, the thought of expanding it to the uh, other LSAPs uh, and other standalone libraries. <coughs> you know, we, we've also met with uh, a consultant, you know, on assisting us with uh, doing this project. You know, but I want to reiterate this is in the extremely, extremely early stages. You know, and we're months and months and months away to even pulling it out and. Uh, providing uh, a final product or even if we move forward with this uh, product at all. So just wanted to touch on that briefly. Uh, I think that is definitely um, a plus in the right direction, especially from the communications that we've been receiving so far from the uh, libraries that have been piloting uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, delivery labels so far. As far as the uh, statewide ticketing uh, system, uh, this system is going to allow us to track any delivery related events uh, such as uh, delivery issues which we really have, uh, requests for extra containers, uh, special requests, notifications of in-service days, things of that nature. You know, uh, we started uh, working this pilot, uh, started, we started with a pilot of about five libraries using the system uh, we've now expanded that to 20 libraries, and that's 20 libraries within each one of our service centers. So we've got quite a few libraries out there that's already using the ticketing system already. Now, you've got a couple of different ways in which you can submit a ticket to us. Uh, the first way, which is the most preferred way in my eyes, is the email uh, preference. Uh, using the email, uh, the system will automatically route it to the appropriate service center. We also have the web-based uh, option to where you could actually go on through the web and submit a ticket. Uh, that doesn't give you the ability, doesn't get, the system doesn't allow, uh, doesn't automatically route that to the appropriate service center. So the member would actually have to actually 
uh, tell the system where this ticket needs to go. So uh, that's why I say the email version is the most preferred version because of the fact that all you need to do is log in th through the, with an email and the system will automatically route it to the appropriate uh, service center. Once that ticket is submitted, you will automatically get an auto reply back from us stating that the ticket has been received and then we will then go to work on resolving whatever the issue is. Uh, we've got a tentative date of probably around uh, uh, April 2015 of rolling that out to the masses. Uh, right now we've only got it uh, uh, being piloted in 20 libraries in each service center so we've got about 120 plus members that are using it now. So, but we will uh, uh, get that out and, and more information on how to use it and when is we're actually going to go live with that. Uh, I also wanted to reiterate this is a statewide ticketing system, which means Heartland is also utilizing this system and doing the exact same pilot that we are as well. So, uh, so far we've had a lot of positive uh, results from the analysis that we've done and I think it'll definitely be good for us to be able to track what's going on within the uh, delivery area. Also, the last thing I'm going to touch on is the fine count. And I really want to thank everyone for their participation, especially within the November uh, fine count. Uh, as uh, Tom has stated, we're going to be doing these fine counts four times a year, uh, September, November, uh, February, and, and May. Uh, February is the next one coming up. Uh, you know, as uh, Dee stated earlier, we've got great accuracy now. We've got great accuracy now versus the container counting, which didn't give you a, a good number that we could actually truly run with. You know, especially when you're looking at uh, outsourcing uh, additional locations and or just renewing the contract that, you know, for the Burr Ridge, Burr Ridge Book of Business. We want to make sure that we're all working with a good number and we're working off of the same page. You know, so having the accurate data is definitely, you know, uh, a plus and we appreciate your participation uh, and providing that uh, to us. Uh, also this data, as, as Tom alluded to, was also going to be used to help us with the standards. You know, you guys will actually know without a doubt what you're entitled to. You know, and I'll just go over the numbers really fast. So if, you're, if your location is receiving 1 to, uh, to 99 items per week, you're entitled to one day or another type of method, you know, of delivery from 100 to 199, two days a week, 200 to 299, three days a week, 300 to 399, four days a week, and 400 plus five days a week. You know, and so that data is also gonna be the framework for us to be able to provide those, those service to you, you know. Uh, so it was definitely, we're definitely putting that, uh, that data to good use. So we're also gonna post those standards on our website, on the webpage. And then also we're going to post them shortly within our e-news so that you guys will have those as well. So going forward, they would be out on the e-news. So also, talk, I just want to touch on some of the ways we've been communicating about the fine counts because on the very first one, that data wasn't as great as we would have expected. You know, we didn't get good participation. You know, the second one we did great. With the November fine count, we did 1,000% better. So a couple of the ways that we communicated the first time, and I think we're going to repeat these, uh, these processes going forward, is put, posting it within our e-news on our website. Also, we did hard copies of the mailing of the, of the instructions and also of the count sheet. We actually mail those out in each one of the containers. You know, this go-around that we're going to do for, for February, we're also going to do a Q&A. You know, we realized that there were... Even the instructions that we thought were somewhat simple, you know, we still had tons of questions concerning when to count, when to stop counting, what should I count in the container, and things of that nature. So we're going to create this Q&A, you know, to hopefully answer a lot of those questions as well. So uh, I'm hoping now at that, you know, with, with the additional things that, that we're going to add, hopefully that should uh, uh, make it even better because what we experienced for... Uh, for November was about a 90% uh, participation, which I think is a huge number. So I really appreciate that, and hopefully the next go around we can be at 95 to 100%. You know, so uh, that's my quick uh, down and dirty report, and I can answer any questions if uh, anyone has any questions.
Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I do want to reiterate that the um, this, the labeling uh, project that Mark talked about is, I think it will change libraries' lives <laughs> if we can get this done. Um, but we are um, definitely, you know, very focused on it being, um, that it working statewide. I mean, there's, as you've, been, as you've been hearing, there's a lot of moving pieces. I mean, I'm, no pun intended, you know, to, um, you know, various <laughs> delivery, um, you know, um, providers, et cetera. Um, you're going to be hearing in a little bit from um, the, from Diane Day, who's going to talk about the uh, um, ILDS, which is the Illinois Library Delivery System, kind of the backbone. Um, so we sort of, you know, that connects the different hubs around the state. So uh, we want to be sure that we, that we keep everybody in the loop and, and don't, you know, don't forget something that results in a mess. <clears throat> um, so any, um, any questions anywhere? Bolingbrook, any questions so far? Nothing so far, Dee. Ridge? I'm just going to run through here because if I don't, people, you know, feel shy to speak up. So, um, how about Burr Ridge? The question is here. Bally. <laughs> Questions. Okay, East Peoria. No questions. Wheeling. <clears throat> Questions here. Okay, how about at Kankakee? No questions here. Al? No questions here. New Lennox? We're good. Okay, how about in Sterling? Nothing here. Or Sycamore? No questions here, thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, then, um, let's see. I think it now is time for Diane Day. Um, do we have her on the phone? <coughs> Morning, everyone. This is Diane Day. Great. Hi, Diane. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Have you been uh, listening for a bit to our discussion? Yes, I have, and I also have Connie Walsh with me from the Carly office. Good morning. All right. Great. So um, there's a lot of people that are um, are participating, so we're hoping that you will tell us about ILDS and how it fits into the delivery overall, as well as some other things. Okay. Sounds good. The uh, ILDS is the Illinois Library Delivery Service. On January 2nd, 2008, ILDS began providing interlibrary loan delivery service in Illinois. Not every Illinois library or even every academic library is an ILDS direct delivery location. ILDS currently provides direct delivery service to 154 locations. These locations include academic and research libraries, as well as the regional library system locations. ILDS is funded by the Illinois State Library with program management provided by the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries in Illinois, and courier services provided under contract with Lantern Delivery Systems. Currently maintains a website for ILDS at IllinoisDelivers.net. The website contains a current list of ILDS direct locations, the ILDS holiday schedule, the label manifest system used by ILDS uh, locations to create labels and manifests, as well as other documentation re related to sending material through ILDS. The website is also the place to go to sign up for either of the two email listservs that Carly manages. The ILDS announce list is used by Carly to send out general program announcements and updates. The ILDS IG listserv is used by ILDS participants to request bags and share tips or other information regarding delivery among ILDS locations. Illinois libraries that are not direct ILDS locations receive their delivery through their regional library system delivery service. ILDS interconnects the Illinois library system's delivery services. 
the library system locations, service transfer points in the ILDS system for materials traveling to or from points not directly served by ILDS delivery. The ILDS paper routing label is primarily used by non-ILDS libraries sending items to ILDS libraries or to other non-ILDS libraries in a different visual library system. Since there are several scenarios for sending items through a library system delivery service and ILDS, a workflow chart detailing the scenarios and the appropriate way to send material was developed. That workflow chart is available on the ILDS website. This was a very brief overview of the ILDS program, so I'd be happy to take any questions that anyone might have. Okay, thank you, Diane. Are there any questions from anyone? Okay. Yeah, I, like I have to If anyone has any, <coughs> any questions or concerns regarding ILDS, they can always send an email to support at carly.illinois.edu, and someone will get back to them. I think Sue Erickson here has a question or a comment. Yeah, my question um, is probably a combination for Mark and um, I kind of know where Di I know where Carly and ILDS is in terms of being a Carly library. Um, some of us have multiple sites and branches, and Robert Morris University has locations all over the state with actually several up here in the north that are members of Rails. When the delivery, um, you know, when the recommendations were going to be put into place for the new service and, and the changes, we were told that the branch locations that are not a part of our main regular ILDS delivery location, the branches who had service would remain getting service for a year. So I was wondering, I think there were things we get about, service we, get Carly, we already get Carly service, no, we get rail service okay. and Heartland service at our, okay. at our branches. Okay. Our main location gets the Carly, Carly ILDS. There's a fee structure in Carly for branches, but I know there was going to be some sort of fee structure set up for other locations if, if people wanted to do that. And I was wondering if there was any progress <coughs> in that area or if, you know, it would be an opportunity for a community hub mm -hmm. um, type with, with a fee. Right. Or what happens June 30th? Can we just lose service at that point? I'm sure not. But. <laughs> so, Mark, do you want to um, uh, weigh in on this? Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, so we haven't touched that yet. Uh, we haven't come up with a sunsetting date or anything of that nature. That is something that uh, is on the agenda for us to discuss, you know, as part of the implementation from the uh, ISLADAC uh, recommendations. So at this point, uh, uh, we have not uh, talked about, we briefly touched on it in our last meeting in November, but we knew we also realized that we were gonna need a lot of other stakeholders involved with that conversation. Um, so we, we sort of put that on the back burner at, at this point. Uh, we, we don't have a definitive answer at this point on if we're going to come up with a fee structure uh, or allow it to continue or put a sunsetting date. Uh, I have no answer for you. How about that? You know, at oh, this that's point. okay. So. No, I appreciate that. Um, it's just yeah. a question that we, sure. you know, it's what we talk about administratively. How are we going to send things out? Um, again, there's, you know, we have delays most, and it's not your fault so much, but it's just other people expect items when we, and we supply a huge number of items. I think I said, Mark, I sent you an email, I think, or I said I'd send you an email, put together some of that, but we are a huge supplier to um, <coughs> not only academic libraries, but to a lot of public libraries for, for items. and. People don't always know when they're going to get it. I think it was the same thing you. They just don't always know, and and at least and they don't understand why it's not coming mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Sure. And I think maybe that's just an education process for for everyone in this. That well, some that's of us, part of it. we I mean, we mail things out because we can you know get it if we have to. We'll mail it out. But if there's a way that we can all help each other and get things, you know, we'd like to do that and be a part of that process. So where is your main? Chicago. Okay. Yeah, and, and they have the daily. Okay. They have daily. Okay. But we go up to <coughs> Waukegan, 
you know, we're in Springfield, Peoria, Waukegan, Aurora, Elgin, yeah, say Peoria, yeah. Yeah. Portland. Yeah. So and we're all over. And yeah. even within the Chicago area, those aren't close locations, but they are <coughs> right next door to libraries. public library, school library, right. you know, other libraries. Right. So we just want to keep that conversation going. And we're not the only institution who has branches, and a lot of publics and other people have those as well. So. Right. All right, well, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Any other questions or comments anywhere? All right, then. I guess that we will move on to talk about multi-type cooperation and networking, even though delivery is clearly an example of that as well, as we have just been hearing. So um, we're going to hear some um, specific um, some <coughs> discussion about some specific projects that are going on. Um, but I'm going to turn it over at this point to Debbie Baskey, who is our member engagement manager. Debbie? Thanks, Deke. Um, I'd like to talk about a few things that we are doing here at Rails to foster and bring together libraries of different types to network and work together. It's, a, it's an, a, an important initiative here for us. And one of the things that we currently do and we'll do more of in the future are uh, hosting networking events at different libraries around the entire Rails service area. And our plan going forward is to have at least one a month in, in different libraries, as I said. And we've had lots of generous libraries, library staff offering to host these. So if you're interested in hosting one at your library, please contact me and let me know. Um, right now I'm working on scheduling the next six months worth. I'm pretty much scheduled through June. And except February, nobody seems to want to host February. But if you'd like to host February, please let me know. Um, and it's a good opportunity to meet colleagues in your area. Generally, people come from the neighboring libraries. It's a good way to meet people from different types of libraries. If it's hosted at a public library, it doesn't mean it's just open to public library staff. It's open to library staff uh, of all types of libraries. And like I said, it's a good way to meet uh, uh, neighboring library staff. And also, usually myself or um, other, other staff from Rails might attend as well. We give an update on what's going on and usually think, uh, come up with some topics of discussion of interest. And going forward, we are going to add a continuing education element to some of these networking events. So there'll, there'll be um, some networking, some CE, some food, some beverages, it's, it's fun, it's entertaining, and you can learn at the same time. So if you are interested, like I said, in hosting one of these events, we are having them around the region. Um, the two <coughs> coming up, we have one on December 15th at, in Quincy at Blessing Riemann School of Nursing. If you're down in that area and would like to attend, I'll be there, that's next week. Um, January 21st in Libertyville at Highland Middle School. And um, I'd love to see some of you, if you're in that area, register for those. Uh, they're always on L2, always promoted in our e-newsletter, and uh, it's just a good way to, to meet your colleagues in the area. And uh, one of the questions I get is if I've attended one, um, should I still go to another one? Absolutely. If you're willing to drive, if they're nearby, please come. We talk about different things. Um, you learn so much from, from your colleagues, so please do. I also wanted to mention the Rails community forums on our website. Some are specific to library type, but most are not, and it's a good way to communicate, ask questions, and, and learn from your colleagues. There are some that are, are regional forums, like there's a Kankakee area forum. We have one set up for all of our um, regions. And again, it's a good way to ask questions and learn from your colleagues. There are some set up by job functions. So for example, if you're a circulation uh, manager or work in circulation, you can join the circulation forum and ask questions. It is a good way to get quick answers I know sometimes we spend hours researching something. 
when we can just put it out there and, and ask somebody a question. I would say the directors are excellent at this. They use their forum um, quite well. So I think that I think everyone else can learn from that and, and use the forums just as effectively. So please do check them out. Um, they're on our website and I think it's again a good way to network as well as, as learn from your colleagues. I also wanted to mention networking groups. These are member driven. They're not Rails driven, but we do try to work closely with the networking groups that, that meet um, in the Rails area. Um, I do want to encourage more multi-type representation and cooperation in these groups. I know not all of the groups allow for that, but I think many of them do. And I don't see any reason why um, you know, a circulation group shouldn't have represent, representation from different types of libraries. So I, I do want to encourage that. And if there are things that we can do to be helping with your networking groups, please let us know. Um, rail staff are willing to attend the groups. Um, if you want to invite us to talk about rail services and what we can do to help, please, please let us know. There is a networking group directory on our website. Um, there are groups out there that we may not be aware of that aren't on the, the directory. Please let me know that and I can contact them and see if we can get them on there. We'd like that to be as extensive as possible. Uh, I'm working on sort of reviewing that now and maybe making some changes to that. So this would be a good time to let me know about those groups. Uh, often there are new library staff that don't know where they go for networking and to meet people that are in similar job functions. So it's helpful to them if that, that list is updated. We also did something at this previous ILA conference in October, something called FaceTime, which was successful. Uh, it was conversational tables, different topics. For example, we had one on tech trends, we had one on outreach and community collaboration. This was a good way for people from different types of libraries to come together over a, a similar topic or issue and network and discuss, um, discuss issues. So that was very successful. Um, we hope to do it again at the Library State of Mind conference in, in October of 2015. But this was a, another thing that we were able to do to bring people of different types of libraries together. Uh, if you have suggestions for ways for us to facilitate networking and cooperation with different types of libraries, I'm open to suggestions. This is an area near and dear to, to my heart, so um, please um, you know, send along those suggestions, email me, call me, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. Um, at the end, we can open it. I'd like to open it up at the end. Uh, I know there are others out there that have partnered public libraries with school libraries, college libraries with public libraries, and if there are some on the, the, um, the detail or on the call that would like to talk about their experiences, I'd like to, to hear about those as well. But first, um, I'd like to turn things over to Lisa Detling, who is the head librarian at Adlai Stevenson High School, and she is at our Wheeling location. She's going to talk a little bit about ways that she's worked with um, and worked with different types of libraries. So, Lisa? Hey, how are you, Debbie? Um, Good, I'd like to, Lisa. I'd like to thank you for inviting me here today, and I want to thank Rails and Mary Witt here in Wheeling. Um, we do some ILL as well, and we appreciate all the support that we get from Rails in having books and materials delivered to us at Stevenson. Um, not only do they support our students, but they support our faculty uh, with their advanced degrees, and also for our faculty who even write articles. Um, they request a lot of materials, so thank you very much for all your help. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how I connect, and it's not a me, me, me kind of moment here. It's just maybe suggestions about what you can do in your community. Um, one of the things that we do at Stevenson, um, I work with um, the foundation director at Stevenson, who um, also, and the fine arts director, we have a 
a big festival every two years called Odyssey. Odyssey. It's a big um, fine arts festival. And the Vernon Area Library has been uh, very instrumental in helping us bring in authors. And in the last couple of years, um, we've brought in, you know, Libba Bray, Maggie Steve Fodder, last year Jay Asher. And we have shared the cost of having these authors come to Stevenson and the ILC, uh, like I would provide um, the books with my staff would provide the books for the students. Mm -hmm. uh, Vernon area would help support um, some of the cost of that and we appreciate it. And it gives the students and the community a big enriched um, experience with the author. And not only as the author co authors come into our building, Jay Asher last year spoke at um, an evening program through the Vernon Area Public Library, opening it up to the community. So it's not just a school event. So that's one of the things we've done. Um, right now, also, um, we, I work with, I should say, I am on a co-chair of the Abe Lincoln Book Award um, that is run through ISLAMA, the Illinois School Library Media Association. I've been on this committee for a number of years. I love it. This is my last hurrah. I'm off the committee now um, in June. And, but it's something that has really brings reading to life for the students in our buildings. Um, we also, you support us, the public libraries, by providing these titles from the, from the Abe Lincoln Book Award in your libraries so that if we don't have enough copies, the kids go to the public libraries to get these, so we really are very grateful in your support of the Abe Lincoln Book Award. Um, something's come out of that, though, this year that I never realized is that academic libraries can help us with this as well, especially community colleges. Um, your students in the community colleges are very, um, a lot of them are just out of high school, and they're still in that wheelhouse of those Abe Lincoln Book Awards, so if you can support the Abe Book Award as well by buying and purchasing some of these books for your students. They still read these titles. And I've worked with um, Sarah Hill, who is a, a librarian at Lakeland College in Illinois. Um, she uses the Abe books to talk to her students and get them to read outside of their coursework. So that's something the academic libraries could help us with as well. So I hope you do. Um, I also am part of the North Suburban Library Consortium. Debbie came to speak with me a few weeks ago about that. I don't know what I would do without these librarians. They're all high school librarians in the North Suburban uh, area. We meet about three times a year, and without their knowledge, their experience, I don't know what we would do at Stevenson. If I need an article and I needed it yesterday because it's always yesterday, um, I can go on at, uh, the N NSC um, email, send out an email and say, hey, look, I need this. I get it in like five minutes. So we help each other. We're here for each other. Um, Monica Tolver is um, handling the next meeting. Um, she already booked us a place. We're going to have a dinner meeting for the first time, trying to meet outside of the school day so that um, Librarians who are not able to meet for these meetings during the day because they have too many classes, we're going to try an evening meeting for the first time. And Monica has been uh, really helpful in that. She's already secured us a date. Debbie, I'll let you know when that is and where we're meeting. So, um, you know, without that support, like I said, we need, we need our other high schools in the area. Um, what else do we do here? Um, I have been for the last six years, a trustee on the Lake Forest Library Board. Um, this is my last hurrah on that too. I'm done, I'll never be able to be a trustee there again. But it's been a great experience. I've worked with the, um, the big book sale that they have every year. I volunteer with that. I've met people from the community. I used to work in Lake Forest, so um, in the middle school. So it's nice to connect with those students again, because I always make sure I park myself in the YA area when I work there. But it's a great way to see what the community wants and what the community needs. So for you, um, even though you all work in libraries in some way, um, get involved in your local public library as well, because your experience is valuable and they could use it. Um, 
Let's see. I know this sounds like a long, drawn-out list. I'm sorry. But um, I work now. Oh, I'm also a former trustee of NSLS, and Mary Witt here has been very helpful um, to me with that. I was only on it at the end when the dissolution of uh, NSLS was happening, and now it's become Rails. But um, these are things we can do. I encourage high school librarians, uh, il, um, middle school, elementary, get involved with Islama. Um, that is your um, organization for the state, and if you haven't gotten involved, do something. Um, now that I'm getting off of Abe and um, the public library, that's my next avenue, I think, to being a part of a large group. Um, recently, I trained with the Barrett Foundation. Um, for It's funded by the Library of Congress, and I've become a train-the-trainer. Um, about teaching with, with um, primary resources. It's something that is very close to my heart. Um, it, and it affects public schools, uh, public libraries, and academic libraries. If you want to learn how to use these resources, the Barrett Foundation would be very happy to train you. Um, I'm hoping next year that our proposal gets accepted at the, um, the, the uh, what is it? We're going to have a, a group um, conference in October in Peoria with the academic, the public, the school, the special libraries. And I hope uh, our proposal from Barrett gets accepted to see how we're using primary sources in our curriculum. And public libraries can help their students that way, too. So I'm hoping that's something that's accepted and um, we can be part of. But if you're interested in that, becoming a trainer, contact me. Uh, Mara Grujanak is the um, director of the Barrett Foundation, and I work with her. So I could always relay anything to her. Um, and that's about it. I mean, uh, besides that, Stevenson Library is now called the Information and Learning Center. We were just redesigned three years ago. And we get librarians and educators from all over the country who come and look at our space to get ideas, to see what works, what doesn't work. There's always something that doesn't work, right? Um, so that's another opportunity that I've been lucky to be part of, to meet librarians from all over the place. So um, that's it. There's tons of ways to get involved, and I hope you do. Thank you. Well, that was right. certainly interesting. I mean, to tell Ron. Sorry about that, everyone. Were you all still going about your 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 business? Yeah, I think so. Did you lose us? <laughs> Disconnected. <laughs> they didn't miss us. I'm like, you know, what's the difference? Did you always repeat what you just said? Just 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're back, so. <coughs> All right, I'm going to hand things over to Anne, who's going to talk a little bit about what Lisa was mentioning, the Library State of Mind Conference. Awesome. Thanks, Debbie. And uh, Lisa, I'm glad to hear that you are submitting at least one proposal. Um, the kinds of things that Lisa just described are... Um, the kinds of projects that would make great content for this conference. Um, so I'm the Director of Technology Services at Rails, but I'm talking to you at this moment as a representative of the um, Planning Committee for the Library State of Mind Conference, which is um, the first combined annual conference that we're having in Illinois of um, quite a few organizations. It's, it will be the annual conference of the Illinois Library Association and the Illinois School Library Media Association, also in um, collaboration with the Illinois Association of College and Research Libraries, otherwise known as IACRL, and the Illinois chapter of the Special Libraries Association. And we're also kind of drawing in other um, organizations who represent Illinois libraries as, as partners in the conference as well. So we're looking to be as inclusive as possible of all types of libraries, all specializations of um, librarianship. So this conference, as uh, Lisa mentioned, is in Peoria in October of 2015. It's October 22nd through the 24th. Um, 
slightly different timing than the ILA conference. It goes through Saturday to allow um, more participation by school librarians. And we are currently seeking program proposals. I encourage everyone to consider submitting a program proposal. Um, they are due on March 20th. That's an extended deadline. Um, and you can check out the website at librariesillinois.org. That's libraries, plural, illinois.org. Um, we are looking for programs that really showcase collaboration across uh, different types of libraries, certainly, or other community organizations, things that you've done, no matter how big or small, that that really showcase your um, creative and innovative solutions, um, demonstrating the kind of leadership that the Illinois library community is known for. Um, we really want to represent as many of those voices and perspectives as we can so that everyone is, um, that we see all these perspectives, that everyone's represented and reflected in the program content. So whether you're an academic, special, school, public librarian, um, you know, a different kind of allied library professional in HR, marketing, facilities law, um, any size of library, any kind of population you serve, your perspective is valuable. So the more voices that contribute to this conference, the more impact this, this kind of groundbreaking event is going to have for each participant and the Illinois library community in general. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or go through the website librariesillinois.org for some basic information about the conference itself and submitting a proposal. Um, thanks, Anne. I just I want to open it up to see if anyone out there has examples of ways that they've partnered with community organizations or other libraries in their community and just wanted to share. So anyone out there have anything they'd like to share? I say one more thing. Um, you know, the local, um, well, the state schools that, the schools that teach library science in our state, you know, um, they have students who are going to be your colleagues eventually. Um, so I encourage you to invite them to your libraries, um, some of the students, to see what you do. We just had a group from Dominican. Um, they have come several times to our library. They bring, they brought their um, school library applicants to us. And I've also had just um, students from the um, education school come in, and we did the Library of Congress thing with them. But Encourage them to visit your libraries because they're going to learn from you and um, as well as just going to school. So that's another way to, um, to I think, bridge the gap, too, is that work with the uh, school libraries. Thank you, Lisa. Does anyone have any questions for Lisa or myself or Anne about the conference that we can answer for you? Comments, suggestions? No? Okay, thank you. Um, Aurora is disconnected again. So it it no, seems no. as well, though maybe they're having connection. Oh, wait, oh are you there? We're they're back. We're, we're, Otherwise, no, we're I was going to introduce Veronica. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> that so that was fun. an old <laughs> message. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I just okay. I just want to say that the um, the conference I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be a great opportunity um, to and I think that we are all even you know the people in this meeting and elsewhere are are all doing things that are multi-type. Um, I'm sitting in a in a branch uh, at, at the Aurora Public Library that's connected to the school um here and i think one of your other branches is in is it a park district uh, is with a park district so i mean it is going on i think we don't you know recognize it as much or talk it up or nurture it so i'm i'm hoping that this conference will um, be a great opportunity to do that can i say something real quick yes um, this is lorraine again from the morris library i was on the steering committee when it was called the one for all conference gail bush asked me and a couple other people to be on the original steering committee oh. when i was in specials yep because we're all doing reference, we're all doing cataloging, right. we're all doing collection development, we're all, we're all doing 
similar things just for different groups. So there's a lot of um, collaboration opportunities and sessions that can help everyone in every type of library. Right. And, you know, we were the, I think, the inventor in Illinois of, uh, uh, you know, multi-type systems. So this is, um, which is kind of an anniversary next year, too, but um, of that, like, you know, 50 years. But um, anyway, I'm really um, excited about the conference. So um, sorry, Debbie, I just wanted to throw that in. That's fine. <laughs> that was helpful. Okay, so I guess we are we moving on to Veranda then? I think we are. All right, yes, Veranda, take it please. away. Uh, before I jump into uh, the collaborative purchases, I just wanted to uh, thank Lisa for her remarks and also just mention a lot of those Abe Lincoln award winner book winning books are also available in the e-read collection just in case any of you are e-read members just a tiny plug um, <laughs> on to group purchase uh, or collaborative purchase actually uh, it's perfect segue from the conversation about the joint conference because as Ann said uh, much like the uh, Library State of Mind Conference in collaborative purchase. The more voices and libraries that participate, the greater the impact. And we're really looking to amp that up uh, in 2015. Um, first of all, I want to introduce, for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to meet my fabulous new colleague, um, Amanda, who is working, who's a new resource sharing specialist from September, who is uh, working with, uh, with us on group purchase and actually the lead on it. You can always call us with any and all questions and we are here to help. Um, we're delighted to have the opportunity to expand group purchase this year past the four major LSAPs, which was something we were doing prior to this year. And we have a great team ready and some great things uh, in mind coming this spring to expand this program even more. Um, right now, uh, as many of you know, we acquired some innovation expert contracts. Right now, we're in the process of ensuring continuing service, that we, there's no interruption of service for those libraries since we just acquired them. So we're working between the libraries and the vendors. Come this spring, we, once we get these folks settled and make sure there's no hitches in their giddy up, we're going to work to expand those contracts to all of the Rails members. You'll see announcements in the Rails e-news regarding that, and I'll tell you what those contracts are, as well as our current uh, group purchase contracts. Um, you, again, always check the Rails e-news. We just did an announcement regarding Collection HQ yesterday in the December 10th uh, e-news. So let us know if you have questions, if anyone is interested in that. Currently, um, so what we currently are working with are ProQuest, deals from ProQuest, the, and EBSCO, which are ones that Rails already had. So come this spring, we'll be offering that up, those up to everybody. Um, also included are deals from Boopsy, Credo, and Gale Cengage, as well as an opportunity to use a product called Public well Web Browser, which is provided by Rails and available to all members. And what it does is it locks down a particular computer so that if you just wanted it to show your OPAC or something like that. The credentials for public web browser for any Rails member to use it are available through the web, the Rails website. Okay, and we're happy to tell you more about that um, if y'all want to give us a call or an email. Um, does anyone have any questions? Again, we'll be what we'll be doing in the spring once we settle the group purchases we have for folks is you'll be hearing from us regarding what um, wants and needs are from Rails members. We'll be doing a survey and taking more feedback so we can get a sense of 
kind of understanding what the major needs are out there and what we should be going off to best support you in serving your communities. Again, right now we're going to work with the current offerings we have as well as settling the deals for our friends who just came over from the Innovation Expert group purchases. Any, yes? I'll move to microphone. Oh. I would just like to add to that, uh, in addition to the group purchases, Rails does have a number of vendor discounts um, that we've arranged that are listed on our website. And in addition to that, uh, we are also an uh, uh, agent member in the Lyricist Cooperative, and we recently received an update to their vendor discount program. So since uh, through Rails membership, uh, Rails members are eligible to use those Lyricist discounts. So if you're not aware of that, check our, our web page uh, for the list. There's some overlap, but they're not entirely the same. Thanks, Jane. And we're always uh, trying to add more, uh, continually add vendor discounts. And those, again, are available on the Rails website. Any questions? Does anyone want to applaud right now? Is anyone feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My ego thanks you all. <laughs> um, let's see. So what's next? I guess we're moving to the general Q&A. If there are no questions at any of the sites in Rails land, I want to be sure we're. Uh... Go I ahead. have a question, but it's not, it's not for you, Veranda. So. Get it. No. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. So, so if you are done, it, this actually goes back. This is a question that came in via our feedback email. It's going back to the joint conference, the Library State of Mind conference. And the question is, will the conference issue professional development credits for educators? It's amazing. I know that is the plan. Um, I can't give you any more detail on that because it is certainly not my wheelhouse, but it's something that I know Cindy Robinson at ILA and I believe Angie Green with Islama were working on. Um, so I would be happy to direct that question to one of them and make sure it's reflected on our website. Um, I know with the changes to the way that the process works, I think they were still having to work through some of the details and it was taking longer than expected. Um, I just found out yesterday in a Stevenson meeting that if the um, hours or CPDUs, whatever you want to call them, aren't Illinois um, generated, then they don't count for um, educators. So the librarians are um, really hoping that uh, we can connect with ISBE so that the librarians can get their hours. We have 120 hours every five years to re-up our um, our licenses. That's what I was told. So just a plug, please. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ann and Lisa. So we will get back with further information on this topic as we have it. That, that's all we have from here. Okay. So uh, thank you, Veranda. Um, so I think we'll, we're going to go around to the sites now and see if anybody has anything that they want to share about their library or anything that they want to say about anything we've talked about today. So I think I will start here in Aurora. Anything to add? Anything going on at your libraries that you want to update us about? I can give a quick update on Morton Grove. Lots going on there. Um, what, be, what started out as a roof repair project turned into a major roof repair asbestos abatement project and has now moved on to interior renovations. <laughs> so we have an empty shell on our main floor, um, and that's why we've probably been doing a lot more ILL requests than we've been sending because most of our adult collection is in storage. Um, we just awarded the contract for the interior renovations. We will have to actually close, and this was just decided yesterday, from December 29th till January 12th. We will close the whole building then. Right now we've just closed most of the adult department. We've been able to maintain our programming and children's department. Hopefully everything will be done sometime <coughs> in March. So there's a quick update. It's a long story. You can go to our website for more details. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Building-wise, here in Aurora, we all of our brains are pointed at May, June of next year when we will open our brand new main library mm -hmm. building. Very exciting, exciting. time in Aurora. Yes. Yes. Our current building is 110 years old, so we're looking forward to the new one. <laughs> Um, Carol Stream, we worked um, this past year on developing our strategic plan. It's going before the board next Wednesday for hopefully seamless approval, and then we'll start implementation. So we're very excited. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what about, let's go to uh, some of the rails facilities. Anything, anybody want to add in <coughs> Bolingbrook or share? <laughs> Um, Shorewood Troy has just moved to 71 hours per week for service, going up from 68. So we added three extra hours on the weekend, and we're pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, Lyle Library has some updates, but they haven't been official yet, but we'll have some leadership updates very soon. Oh, okay. That's a real teaser there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um. Fountain Dell Public Library, I'm, I'm really happy that we've got um, our first group of students who are in like the, the last step before they can join their online uh, high school program to get their high school diploma. So they've, yeah. they've gone through our initial passport to success part and they're doing the pre-testing class. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say the name right. But after that, they'll be able to start their uh, high school diploma and be paired with a, an advisor to take them through the online program. So that's pretty cool. We're, you know, we're all, there's like three people who are almost there. So that's, that's really cool. Awesome. That is great. Okay. That's everyone in Bolingbrook, Dee. Okay. How about in Burr Ridge? Questions here? I can talk. Yeah. Um, do I have to go over there? No, no you just speak up. Speak up. You can hear me. Yay. Um, <laughs> uh, well, we had our bridging the digital divide grant that we've been working on all year, and uh, the youth department's doing really well on getting their statistics of people using it. We're having a little more trouble with our um, public services, which is our adult um, reference, et cetera. Um, so uh, our new head of public services uh, and her staff created a, um, a brochure uh, and, a, and a kind of a way of looking at doing uh, uh, computer classes that is very different than what we've done before. It's called computer Y-O-U versity, so university. Uh, and it's taking the computer classes, instead of saying uh, learn uh, Excel, learn Microsoft, learn whatever, um, it's, it's taking the next step and saying, if you want to uh, start a business, these are the, the classes we will be teaching you in. Uh, or if you want to uh, uh, send out Christmas card or holiday cards, uh, uh, we will teach you this one week and this the next week. So Photoshop or whatever the first week and um, how to design a card the second week, which includes um, publisher and that sort of thing. So it's, it's a, a skew uh, or a, a different way of looking at um, our computer classes and we're, and we're doing brochures and a lot of outreach to the community and we're hoping that this will uh, uh, energize our um, community to come in and use the, the services more. Um, and we've been doing a lot of walking around talking to a variety of people in the community. In addition to that, um, when I came on four years ago, we were about $782,000 in debt. We're down to just less than $2,000. So, not just me, it's the board. Uh, yes, dang. <laughs> So we can start looking at actually updating uh, without my going off to Target and Ikea and bringing this stuff back. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're very excited. We're going to start talking to an interior designer, and it's, it's all good. Yes. Thank you. All right. That's a good clap. That's a good clap. <laughs> oh, that's, I had a more time. Yours is great. Anybody else here? Or Could we, okay. excuse me, we have a question, where the last person that spoke is from? What library? South Holland. Thank you. South Holland Public. Great, That's thank awesome. you. Okay, that's it in Burr Ridge. Okay, thank you. How about Coal Valley?
Looks like we have nothing to add from Coal Valley. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Judy. How about East Peoria? Nothing here. Thank you. Okie doke. Um, uh, Wheeling. Uh, Roxanne Bennett uh, from uh, Fox River Valley Public Library District out in the Dundees and northeastern King County. Uh, we're really excited. We finished our uh, strategic plan. Uh, board approved it in September, and we are beginning to roll out elements of that. Uh, one part of it is also uh, beginning, officially beginning, facility needs assessment planning. Uh, we have about 0.4 square feet per capita <laughs> in terms of service uh, locations uh, between our two, between our main library and our small branch in the Park District building. And uh, we're working with Anders Dahlgren and uh, in, in the process of building our team of construction management and public policy assistance and financial uh, advisor and um, let's see an architect so over the next few months we'll be finalizing who all is on that team uh, to begin moving forward in our plans good for you Lux. congratulations yeah. Thanks. That's anybody else that's it from wheeling Okay, thank you. Um, how about at the Illinois State Library? Anything to add today? No, we don't have anything to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you. How about in Kankakee? Uh, we don't have anything to add. Thank you. All righty. How about LaSalle? We're good here. Thanks. Okay, thank you. How about New Lenox? <laughs> this is Noreen from Piatone. I'm leaving with what Lisa was talking about. We've been working with our school district this past year, and we had the third graders, 80 of them, come to the library, decorate our Christmas tree, and light it, and sing Christmas carols. Um, needless to say, we all had the parents with them, too, so we were pretty crowded. We had over 200 people show up, so that was good for us. So it's working well, working with the, others, with the school district. <clears throat> Wait, do I get to go? Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rich Ashley, Fossil Ridge Library. Tomorrow we have our first meeting with the architect for, to begin the schematic design phase for our renovation. Um, and I'm kind of really nervous about it. Uh, but excited too, because it's going to be great. And that's right. it. It's going to be great. Think positive. All right. Um, Sterling. Maybe Jenny popped off at some point. How about Sycamore? This is Nancy Radke, uh, again from the Clinton Township Library in Waterman. We're celebrating our 100th anniversary this month. So we do have a Christmas open house on the 22nd with um, where we'll be celebrating. And we also will have a brief program at 7 p.m. that night. So we're pretty excited about that. This is Peggy wonderful. Logan from the Malta Township Public Library, and I am just um, doing an early promo for our librarians working together. For those who don't know what that is, we're directors from the DeKalb County area and a few libraries around the, the perimeter there. And we do an annual staff development day in March. And this year, it's going to be open to all the Rails libraries. Hmm. Many of us clo actually close our libraries for the day and bring everyone. This year, it's on Friday, March 13th from 9 to 3. It's called Taking Care of Business is the theme. And um, there's kind of a pun on that. But I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, we're going to be talking about how to take care of our patrons in the morning. We'll break for lunch early afternoon. We'll be ta uh, talking about how to work with and take care of our coworkers, and then we have um, uh, 
um, physical therapists coming in to talk about how we need to take care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. And uh, we'll be having that hopefully on L2 in early January. So we just want to invite everybody out. We always have a great time. And the food at the venue is marvelous. <laughs> All right, thank you, Peggy. Thank you. you guys look cold there in Sycamore. Yes. Are you? Oh, sorry. You look like you're, yeah, you're shivering. All right, well, that wraps up the formal agenda. Is there anything else that anybody wants to add or say? Yeah, Dee, this is Anne. Um, I just yes. got a response from Cindy Robinson at ILA verifying that both ILA and ISLAMA are certified providers of CPDUs, so they will definitely be offered at the Library State of Mind conference. That's great. Thanks, Ian. All right, well, I think on that positive note, um, <laughs> I, will, I will thank everyone and say I hope you all have a great holiday, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, oh, wait, um, not yet. Um, next member update is on March 26th. 9.30 to 11.30, and if you have topics, we'd love to hear suggestions. So, so okay, now I'll say happy holidays, and uh, we will be uh, adjourned. Thanks, everyone.